Whether you have a voracious reader or a reluctant reader, these tips might help you cultivate a love of reading in your home. Ew, reading. Why read when you can just watch the movie? <laughs> regular secular? I almost said regular secular reader. <laughs> Still feel a little bit weird about filming like outside when you just walk by. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back to Regular Secular Mama. I have a little bit different background today because my light ring finally kicked the bucket and I have not enough light inside my RV. <laughs> anyway, if you're new here, hi, my name is Cassie and I'm a sixth year homeschooling mom to two kids who are currently ages nine and 11 years old. Before we go any further, please don't forget to like this video and go down and hit that subscribe button. There's also a bell you can turn on to receive notifications for when I post new videos. Today's video is going to be a little more chatty, a little bit less edited, hopefully. <laughs> and I'm going to be sharing a little bit about our reading journey in our homeschool. Obviously, I am not trying to tell anybody what to do. I definitely do not want to sound preachy or um, condescending or patronizing or any of those. So I'm convinced that my kids, who thankfully both love reading, um, I'm convinced that their love of reading is a direct result of the example that I have set for them. And that might be tooting my own horn just a little bit, but I feel like it was this great experiment ever since you know I was pregnant with them that has turned out really well and I wanted to kind of share that experience with you guys and hopefully inspire you and give you some tips to help your own children uh, develop a deep love of reading. I'm pretty convinced that that is one of the biggest hurdles I think for kids who uh, hate school or uh, struggle to learn or struggle with school assignments or whatever. Uh, I feel like if you have kids who love reading just in general, that will translate into more success, I guess you could say, uh, in academics. It could have happened anyway, maybe it's just their nature, but I'm, I'm convinced that there are things that I did over the past 11 years that helped them develop that love of reading. So looking back kind of on my own childhood and my own experience with reading, um, I remember being a very content reader. I remember enjoying reading when I was very young. However, I feel like going, I, I was a public school student, I don't know how many times I've shared that, but I public schooled all the way through. I did not have um, any sort of access to or knowledge of the homeschooling world. Uh, it, of course, has gotten much bigger in recent years, but I didn't really know anything about that when I was young. So I was public schooled all the way through. Um, like I said, I was a very happy, contented reader. I don't know if I would say voracious, but I really enjoyed reading. Probably up until about middle school, of course, you know, when everybody changes in middle school um, and worries about being cool or whatever. <laughs> but I do feel like sometime in middle school and definitely in high school, my love of reading just like vanished. And I think it had a lot to do with school assignments and with, you know, forced reading assignments and assigned books and just um, how heavily comprehension questions are pushed on kids for like standardized testing and yada yada yada. I could go on and on but I do feel like that killed my love of reading and I don't remember reading a whole lot from then until my kids were like babies. Of course, when you're first starting your family, you have all these ideas and you're learning all these things about how to be a good parent and raise good kids and teach them what they need to know. And that was kind of the point at which I decided to make reading a priority uh, because I knew how much that would benefit them as they got older. And that really started with me. So I started picking up books again. I started reading more just for my own enjoyment. Um, just to, you know, set an example and make it a priority for myself first. 
So flash forward to today, I can't leave the house even without my Kindle. I pick up whatever I'm currently reading whenever I get a chance. I listen to audiobooks in the car whenever I'm alone and can listen to my own audiobooks. I, I read in bed before I go to sleep every night and I try to carve out at least a little bit of time during the day just to quiet down and read for myself. Um, of course that wasn't always this way but yeah when they were babies I made this a priority. I read for myself. I read to them, I read around them, I read with them as much as I possibly could with the express purpose of growing readers. Now we have gotten to the point where I sometimes have to make them stop reading in order to do their chores or their other schoolwork, uh, which is a, a good problem to have. I'm not complaining about it at all. <laughs> uh, I mean, sure, they're kids, they love Minecraft, they love Pokemon, they love playing outside with friends, but when, you know, you get in the car and one of the first things they request is an audiobook, most of the time that's, I call that a win. <laughs> You might be interested to know that as far as learning to read, my kids are, were kind of at complete opposite ends of the like learning to read spectrum. I have one who went from, you know, a basic understanding of letter sounds to fluently reading early chapter books in like a matter of months. Picked it up like that and it was really cool to watch. It was just amazing. Um, I think she was like five. Yeah, five years old. So that was really cool. Of course, I didn't expect that level of, uh, you know, accelerated learning with my other child, my son, but um, he definitely was on the not struggling to read, I guess, but he took way, way longer. I want to say it took him from like when we really focused on letter sounds and learning to read to where he was reading at least fluently, probably two years, maybe even three years, something like that. So his journey to fluent reading was definitely slower, more intentional, uh, a lot more, you know, patience with lessons and, and practice and things like that. So that's kind of our story, you know, my story, my kids' story, our journey, reading, and how that impacted our homeschool. Uh, now I would like to share with you guys some tips and just some advice based on our experiences that I hope will help you if you are struggling to help your children to enjoy reading and to not see it as such a chore. If you have uh, just started and you have babies or toddlers, there are things you can do now that will help them in the future. If your kids are preteens and they hate reading, there are still some things that you can do to help get that ball at least rolling in the direction that you want it to. So first of all, of course, you want to set an example. Um, it's kind of hard to instill a love of reading without demonstrating a love of reading. Uh, now that doesn't mean you have to spend every moment of your day reading or force yourself to read things that you don't enjoy, but if you at least uh, pick up a book now and then and even share what you're reading with your kids, uh, maybe tell them about a really interesting story you just finished or a book that you heard about that you're really excited to read or you think sounds really interesting. Now don't worry so much about uh, family members, you know, aunts, uncles, grandparents, even your spouse. My husband <laughs> probably has not picked up a book and read anything like a book in years since high school. Um, and that's fine. Like they have their own things that they enjoy that are not the same as the things I enjoy. Along those same lines, you want to make sure that books are a part of your family culture. So, you know, fill your home with books to whatever extent you can, whether it's board books and fabric books for babies. We even had like those plastic foamy books that you can throw in the bathtub and play with. So do that, like start from the very beginning, have them out and accessible, let them use them, hopefully not abuse them, but you know, 
give them free reign to explore these books in whatever way makes sense to them. <laughs> I have a funny story. My, um, my son treated books pretty much how you would expect a toddler to treat books, but my daughter ate books. Like, she consumed them, literally. <laughs> uh, she would just gnaw on them, and even when she was three, four years old, would just tear the pages and look at them and just completely destroyed any book we had that was not like made out of wood or something. So I mean it was annoying. It was like, you know, why are you destroying our books? But she loved it. She really enjoyed interacting with these books in that way. So we, you know, fueled that passion. <laughs> anyway, just saying, make it a, a presence in your home that there are books and they're meant to be used and enjoyed and looked at. Even in our RV, we probably filled it to the brim with more books than we should have or could even fit in there <laughs> when we were um, when we were hauling the U-Haul, you know, towing it over here from Texas when we moved. I actually kept all the books in moving boxes in the U-Haul and not in the RV because I was worried about the weight. Like that's how much we were trying to pack in there. <laughs> anyway, so just saying, if you wanna raise kids that love reading, that interact with books all the time, they're gonna need to have access to them. Which ties directly into my next tip. Uh, this is a big one. Make trips to the library a regular part of your life and your routine. So of course, go get a library card, get one for the kids if you can keep track of and juggle all of those. <laughs> but definitely go and spend time in the library on a regular basis. They're gonna be surrounded by books and interacting with librarians. That's probably been the best place for my kids to practice like talking to other adults and asking for things in a way that they'll understand. You know what I mean? Like the socialization issue. <laughs> Um, anyway, so we go to the library religiously every week and have as much as we possibly could since pretty much the beginning of our homeschool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we started like right when we started homeschooling, we would go to the library every single week. And sometimes we just pop in there for a minute if there's a certain book on hold. Sometimes we'll spend hours there just reading whatever book we picked up or brought with us or checked out. It does not have to be this huge commitment, but it's a good idea to have it be at least a part of your routine on a regular basis. This next tip might not fit exactly with everybody's philosophy or way of life, but if you're not opposed to it, try getting your kids a Kindle. They make really good Christmas gifts, by the way. We treated it almost as like a, a rite of passage when they got to a certain age and were reading fluently and enjoying it. We would make this big deal about buying them a Kindle for Christmas, and that was really fun. Your library almost certainly uses either Overdrive or Libby, which is run by Overdrive. Um, to check out ebooks. So you can very easily get on your phone or whatever, borrow an ebook instantly and send it to their Kindle, and then they can read it, you know, right away without having to order something on Amazon or wait for it to come into the library. It's like instant gratification, but book related. <laughs> This last tip is a big one, and it's one that I have to remind myself of constantly, <laughs> and that is to be really, really careful when it comes to school-related reading lessons and reading assignments. For the already reading crowd, your older kids, um, it's really easy to want to assign work related to books, um, and even assign certain books and certain chapters. It's really hard to trust that growth is happening without, you know, comprehension questions and grammar exercises related to your books and all of those things. Um, even Charlotte Mason's style, copy work, narration and dictation, which I'm a big fan of, uh, can sometimes get a little tedious and turn reading into a chore. Here are some things you can do instead. 
you can uh, give some options for what they want to read as their you know, independent reading for school. Instead of assigning just one book that ties into history, not every kid is going to be into historical fiction or even if they do enjoy it sometimes, it gets old after a while. You know, some kids don't enjoy it all the time. Giving them a select few books to choose from gives them a little bit of control to be able to say, you know, this book sounds more interesting to me than those other two options. But it gives you uh, the chance to incorporate quality literature that you as the teacher feel has merit to balance out all the dogman and the warriors books. <laughs> Another tip is to keep any assignments related to that book they're reading very light and low pressure. Uh, we have done all kinds of things. We've gone from, you know, very loosely just reading books without really doing anything to full-on curriculum that includes comprehension questions and grammar exercises and everything like journaling prompts related to the, each chapter. Um, so I do think the latter is overkill and becomes tedious and makes that book not as fun to read. At this point, what I do for my 11-year-old is I, you know, she chooses her book from the options that I give her or we discuss what book we would like to read together and we read it together. So we buddy read, which means we do have to be on the same page. We do have to agree and decide on how many chapters to read every day. Uh, if we didn't and just was a free for all, which would be nice, we wouldn't be able to discuss very well what's going on. We would, you know, be at different points in the book. So we do kind of assign chapters for that reason. But as far as assignments that go along with her reading, all I ask her to do is to take out a, a regular lined journal that she has, and she is supposed to just respond to whatever she read that day in whatever way that makes sense to her. So I told her some things she could think about are, you know, characters and what they're doing, some of the choices they're making. Uh, she can simply retell what happened in that chapter or she can share her thoughts, you know, what she thinks is going to happen next or what she thinks about the story so far. So it's very open-ended. She seems to enjoy just jotting her thoughts down on paper without worrying uh, so much about getting a right answer or even keeping things spelled correctly or anything like that. Um, we're not treating this as like a writing assignment exactly, just it's just a way for her to get some thoughts down on paper. Sometimes we'll chat about it if I, you know, read what she wrote on the paper and she's sitting there, I'll say like, yeah, I thought that too. That was really interesting, right? But my primary objective with these reading assignments is just to instill a love of reading and to just expose her to um, quality, diverse literature. So that's why we keep it really light and I think it works better for both of us, really. Uh, anything else just tends to get in the way of those objectives. Now for the learning to read crowd, the younger kids, um, I can't stress enough the importance of keeping lessons light and carefree and patient uh, and fun and, uh, and just following their lead. And this goes both ways. I said earlier that I have kids on both ends of the learning to read spectrum, one that picked it up like that and one that took years to gain fluency. So with my daughter, if I had slowed her down and uh, metered out our lessons to match what the curriculum said or what I thought we should be doing that day or that week, it would have been boring. It would have uh, slowed her down. It would have been tedious. And I think that would have done the opposite of what I wanted to do, uh, helping her enjoy and love reading. And then on the other side of that coin, my son needed lots and lots of slow, short, easy lessons. Not easy, but you know, I really needed to follow his lead and pay attention to his, his cues. 
I had to really learn to watch for those signals that he was getting tired, that it was um, draining him, or that he just wasn't interested in a certain book. We actually jumped around quite a bit to different uh, learning to read curricula because I wanted it to keep it I wanted to keep it fresh and interesting. I'm not going to share in this video uh, much about the specific curricula that we use to learn to read, but if you're interested, leave some comments down below. Uh, that may be a future video that I do going into each different learning to read curriculum that we tried and giving my thoughts on those. That particular skill, it, it's such a um, an individual thing and uh, I mean, with every curricula, not one type or style or program is going to work for everybody, but especially learning to read. I feel like that's the one that like, you really just need to try as many different types or programs or styles you can get your hands on um, to see what is going to be a good fit. Or like in our case, sample a bunch of different things and switch from one to another until, you know, it clicks. <laughs> I love this kind of uh, sitting down and chatting uh, style of video, <laughs> and I especially love my, my new background. <laughs> I may come and do these uh, here more often because it's actually very quiet and peaceful and pretty. Don't forget to go down and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, like this video, and I love so, so much to hear from you guys in the comments. That's probably my favorite part of sharing videos on YouTube. So definitely leave me a comment down below, share a little bit about your journey or what you were doing to instill a love of reading. Also, if you have any questions for me, I am happy to answer those and I respond as quickly as I can. Thank you so much for joining me for this little chat. I really enjoyed this like sit down chatty style of video. If you're interested in more curriculum uh, videos, I have a playlist right up here you can check out and I'll see you next time. Bye.